I saw a man with a burden on his back and a book in his hand. The more he read, the more the burden on his back grew, that he couldn't put it down, as the more he read, the more he knew what it said was true. He was afraid though, as the book was a warning, a warning that his home would be destroyed, and not just his home, but his whole city. It warned that the rulers of his city continued to make war against the king of the whole land, and that he would tolerate it no longer. He showed the book to his family. His children laughed. His wife told him not to worry about it. Where did you even get it from? She said. Ah, go to bed. I- I'm sure you'll feel better about it in the morning. Seeker, for that was his name, was tired, so he agreed. That night, however, he couldn't sleep. The burden wouldn't allow him to get comfortable, and it wouldn't come off no matter what he did. After a restless night, as soon as the sun came up, he left. He ran out of the city and cried out in a loud voice, What do I need to do? Where can I go? Is there any way I can be safe? A man in the distance heard him and came over. What's the problem? he asked. Seeker showed him the book and read the warning. Yes, said the man, you are right, this warning is true. But did you keep reading? There is a way you and your family can be safe. Go to the city of life. The king has made a road to save the people of this city. He pointed in the distance to a narrow gate and told Seeker to head to that. Once he arrived, someone else would show him where he needed to go. (laughs) Seeker was ready to set off, but the man held him back. Before you go, you need to know that the road is difficult and sometimes dangerous. Are you sure you want to go? Seeker said he had no other choice. He went home to gather his family. His family, however, would not listen, hearing that the road was dangerous and being comfortable where they were, and not really trusting the book, they refused to come. Eventually, Seeker told them, I cannot stay here, I must go to the city of life. I wish you would come with me, but I have to go. As he headed out of the city for the second time, people called out to him, Hey, Seeker, where are you going? He told them, the city of life. Oh, you think you're so much better than us, do you? Stay here. Others jeered that the rulers might consider this treason. Still others that he should probably just be happy where he was, where he was comfortable. Seeker covered his ears and began to run. Two from that city chased him down. Their names were Stubborn and Flip Flop. Both had resolved to bring Seeker back. And when they caught him, they asked, What business do you have going to the city of life? You belong here. Seeker told them all about the warning he had come across and how they needed to leave simply to be safe. (laughs) Not happening, buddy, said Starbin. This is my home and I am comfortable here. You should be too. After more discussion, Starbin realized that he wasn't going to convince Seeker and said to Flip Flop, Come on, let's go home. He's clearly gone cuckoo. But Flip Flop disagreed. No, I believe him, he said. I'm staying with him. So Stubborn left the two of them in disgust and went home. Seeker and his new companion continued down the road, full of excitement about the new journey. Seeker shared with Flip Flop all he had learned so far, showing Flip Flop in the book. So excited they were that they forgot to pay any attention to the road, not even watching their step, and suddenly they fell into a swamp. The mud stuck to them. They tried to free themselves, but the more they pulled, the more they wrestled, the more they fought, the more the mud pulled them down. It seemed to suck against them. Soon, as they tired, they gave up fighting and allowed themselves to sink deeper, deeper. Seeker hated himself and longed to be home. But even here he couldn't face the thought of going back. Flip Flop could. He was livid. Let's go on a journey, he said. It'll be fun, he said. We're going to a fancy city of life and no one is going to fall in any swamps. I'm sorry, said Seeker. I didn't know. Yeah, and I bet there's a million other things you don't know about the rest of this. I am going home. Fueled entirely by his anger, Flip Flop 
found that he could push against Seeker and reach to the edge of the swamp. He pulled with all his might and eventually rolled out over the edge of the swamp. He picked himself up. There! Look how filthy you got me! He shouted at Seeker and turned back to the city. Wait! Seeker cried. At least help me out too, but it was too late. Flip Flop was already gone. Seeker considered trying to go that way. But even as he tried, the burden on his back continued to weigh him down and he realized he could not go anywhere. Eventually, he just cried out, Help! Then again, but louder, Help! Someone heard him from the other side of the swamp. It's okay, he called out. Put your feet down. It doesn't get any deeper. Just walk towards me. Seeker slowly trudged forward until he was close enough. And help pulled him out. Covered in mud though he was, he was grateful to at least be free from that swamp. He lay down by the side of the swamp, recovering and asked, Why was this swamp in the path? Why hasn't someone filled it in or covered it up? This swamp cannot be filled in, replied Help. Every time someone leaves that old city, all of the muck and guilt from their old life comes here to drag them back, filling the swamp afresh. The king will clear it once he deals with the rulers of that city, but until then, he has placed firm pillars in through the swamp. Seeker looked back and saw the stone pillars reaching through the swamp. And now, how he wished... He had been paying attention.